to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and of course, we're gonna keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. We got a big one for you guys today. Gridwatch has everything about the North American Major. Double Tap is gonna take a look at why Space Station Gaming is one of the top teams in North America. And of course, we're gonna see everything the community is passing around in Breakout. Here's some interesting news that you guys might be really happy about if you've bought crates in the past. Epic Games has announced that they will be giving any players that previously purchased any of those crates and keys a thousand Rocket League credits into their account. This action comes from a class action lawsuit in the United States uh, and Epic is just decided to send it globally everywhere. Everyone gets a thousand credits. The best part of all of this is that you don't got to do anything. All you have to do well, is have Rocket League going to have purchased a crate or a key and those credits should show up right in your account, which is super sick. But let's move on to the news. We're going to move on to Gridwatch because a North American major just went down and we're going to get y'all caught up. final major of the RLCS X Winter Split has come to a close, with North America crowning its regional champion after a fierce competition. Many teams entered, but only one emerged victorious. Let's take a look at who walked away with the title of the best in the West. Many of North America's most talented squads were in the running for victory, but three names in particular were on everyone's lips heading into the Winter Major. Team Envy, who swept the first two regional events of the Winter Split, Space Station Gaming, the winners of the Fall Major, and NRG, who dominated the grid. Despite Despite this pedigree, all three teams experienced some difficulty in the early stages of the Major. NRG found themselves locked in an extremely close match with version 1, only barely staying alive in overtime of V1's match point before rounding out the set with one last game. Envy was in a similar position with Sonics, losing the first two games before pulling off a reverse sweep in a trio of close calls. And finally, while well, SSG started out strong with a 3-0 game over Ghost Gaming, a crushing defeat against NRG in the subsequent round made one thing clear. NRG was isn't gonna let anyone, not even last split's champs, stand between them and glory. Squishy driving back towards the net just jumps and hits that 180 touch off the nose and it just pings right past Rettles. There was no chance from then on. Scary G trying to push it out here and it, it this series will go the, the way these series often do where one team is sincerely able to just, be, is, is just straight up playing a more clean game all the way around throughout the course of the series as game five comes to a close it will be nrg winning it in five space station getting the one win the penalt before the penultimate game that will be that series in the books as nrg moves on to the winner's finals it would be nrg versus envy in the winner's finals and once again nrg was ready to blow away all expectations though envy took the first game four to two nrg bounced back winning three straight games in a row to put themselves at match point envy was only able to eke out a single win before getting knocked down to the lower bracket like again those lateral passes deep into the box justin a bit too far back there on his own goal line, allows Miss to creep in. 11 seconds left, Jormi comes down to the kickoff. Here we go, kickoff neutralized. Atomic has the bounce, but Miss not in the position he wants to be. And now Envy gotta go the distance in the air. Turbo finds Mist on the ground. That's a pop-up high, Turbo's got the boost to handle it. Our touch and it's gonna oh. touch the ground! NRG send Envy down and they'll wait! in the grand final. But NRG weren't the only unlikely heroes of the tournament. In lower bracket, Rogue was on a hot tear of their own, crushing powerful teams left, right, and center in incredible 4-0 sweeps. Not even the mighty Space Station Gaming and Envy were safe from their wrath, both finding themselves on the losing side of blowout matches. And here comes Miss, gets the demo, gets the drop down pass, but Atomic unable to find that angle. And here we go, James, 15 seconds to go. Envy have to dig deep. Turbo launching to this to the corner. Atomic, Wait. the 50, it goes down. Will it stay up? No, it doesn't. Rogue sweep Envy and are moving on to the grand finals. Four up, four down, and Team Envy down and out of this major, but Rogue 
propelling themselves to once again another Grand Finals. Thus, in the end, it came down to two underdogs in the Grand Finals, NRG versus Rogue in a war of attrition, with both teams' endurance being tested as the set came down to its final game, match point for both competitors. Despite their long journey before that, Rogue managed to hold on and clinch it, resetting the bracket and leading to one last match for all the marbles. This is Justin turns back in. The pass to Squidgy, blocked in the top corner, no shot. Garagee puts another one on, oh. third throw denies. 25 seconds left and Rogue's holding on. Oh, that's a great pass to Squishy, and he missed it. He was trying to go straight back across the pitch, looking for Garrett G, probably. Oh, oh. And now they're really going to try and exercise themselves horizontally to spread Rogue out and look for an opening. Seven seconds left. One goal game. Zero second drill incoming. Off to the edge, and Rogue oh. just hold on to control. Taroko's going to put it into the ground. That's Rogue. They take the first series. We go for round two. Let's go to the bracket reset. Unfortunately, the final set didn't go nearly as well for Rogue. While they managed to get a few early wins in, NRG quickly gained breakaway momentum, culminating in three straight victories to claim the Winter Major in their name. Both teams fought hard, but in the end, NRG proved that their resolve and skills were simply stronger. Rogue chases this one. It's over the top of Garrett. It's up to Justin. He gets in the way. That was Two players though through it. Up to Turin Turo. Here comes the breakout. Justin pushing it high. Turin Turo gets it off the backboard, but Squishy's there as well. Turin has to make a second touch. And now to carry it away. Gives it the first killer. The clutch player. Touted by some as the best player in the world right now. Can he step up in the moment when Rogue needs it? Justin. On the backboard for Ooh, Garrett nice. to drop it down and through! They get revenge for the regional event number three and become RLCS North American Winter Split Major Champion. Now joining me on the line, it's RLCS caster, content creator, and 1v1 overseer. It's John McDonald, a.k.a. Johnny Boy. Thanks for joining me, man. Hey, thank you for having me. It's, uh, I think that's the first time I've ever been introduced by my actual name in, uh, oh, in Rocket yeah. League. So <laughs> if, that it was feels nice. weird, eh? Very weird, yeah, but I, I kind of like the good weird. weird yeah, good yeah. Way. There you go. Uh, well, I want to talk about one of your accolades there. It's the you become, <laughs> in the Rocket League world, the 1v1 guy like you for years now you've just taken over that scene and let uh, your platform be the showcase for that world and those players and and recently you've been doing a series called smug um where you're pitting uh, a bunch of fun personalities or even uh, you know great players against each other to see who wins in a 1v1 Can you just talk to me about that like off the bat like where did that idea come from and just how it's been going recently well, the, the initial idea was something we worked on with Psyonix directly. Um, we, know, we, we were looking at Rocket League Esports as a whole and just how packed it is. It didn't really make sense to put in another tournament from players' point of view or from fans' point of view because it would just be too much. But these like one-off events, it's a lot easier for a professional player uh, in particular to play a series than it is to play a, a tournament. So that's where the idea kind of stemmed from. We're more likely to get better matches. Let's uh, move on though to some uh, to actual good players here and talk about the North America uh, major. Um, and uh, what we just saw recently here, uh, of course, right off the bat, spoiler alert, NRG won it. Um, and that you know brings me to the question of uh, less of diving in on, on why they won it, because I feel like we are having a bit of a, um, a back and forth in North America. We're seeing different teams take wins you know envy had a little bit of a streak there before we saw rogue take a regional recently nrg just got this major and i'm wondering um you know what what's what your view is on north america right now because it certainly feels like there's a a bit more chance for any team to take it as opposed to eu with bds yes uh B well bds are just one of a kind they are dominating they're su super clutch ridiculously consistent i think that that's the key is there's lots of teams who can clutch out a series or clutch out a tournament but to do it with the amount of consistency that bds have is something no other team has even come close to doing but yeah there, there is the argument that or the discussion that you know that's not possible in north america because there's more good teams and i actually agree with that to to a degree i think that there are more very very good teams in north america i mean i would i would say rogue are now part of that um uh group you've definitely got to put envy space station gaming in there um so you've got kind of like a, a big four but out of those four rogue and nrg are like by far and away mm. the top two at the moment um and then you go down the line how many teams are able to you know consistently provide an upset i think you've got maybe another four or five in in north america whereas in europe 
you're probably only looking at maybe, I mean, the, you've got BDS in, on their own and then maybe Vitality mm -hmm. second because, yeah, they've been the major second place twice. Yeah, top block's very inconsistent. Giants, likewise. Guild, I mean, I have no idea what to expect from that team. Galaxy Racer, the, an endpoint. Yeah, very inconsistent. Team Queso are mm -hmm. inconsistent. Oxid has started off horribly. I think maybe Dignitas are the only other team along BDS and Vitality who I'm confident yep. are going to be consistently good from now on. Well, I, I just want to um, throw maybe one challenge in the way and see what you think about it. Is is especially Rogue recently. Um, you look at what they're doing, and some people are saying that the Rogue is taking a page out of BDS's book here. Um, it just in their approach, their play style, how they're uh, you know just approaching the game of Rocket League at this level right now, and it does seem kind of like that sometimes they're just there and you're like why are they already there how did they know the mm. ball would be there and that's very much what bds seems to do they have that crystal ball do you feel like rogue might be a challenge uh you know that mirror matchup for bds if the the regions were to cross um rogue are an interesting one because both the championship sundays for the, the major and the last regional they were i think overall the best team um nrg were able to beat them this time around but it was obviously extremely close, and uh, yeah, they, they could have gone either way in that last series. It was definitely a marathon run for Rogue, um, but they didn't really look that good on day one. And against BDS, you'd have to just be good every day if you're gonna be if you're gonna beat them. So I, I don't know if I'd be as confident in Rogue. Rogue on their day are probably the best challenge for BDS. That's awesome, Johnny. Thanks so much for joining me. from a different player, so that's, you know, some really good synergy by them. In the challenge game, now Tormund waits downfield, back in in the middle for Gimmick. He's challenged, but he gets the ball past the last defender. V1 are not done. And finally, they've got the overtime to go their way. What a shot. Stand strong on the goal line. Yeah, brilliant play from Justin there to dodge both demolitions and then actually get a wheel onto a challenge. Just hold on to control and then the counter attack doesn't do all three of them tie game. What? How does this even work? He comes off the corner, up the ceiling and catches oh. first killer's poor touch and how about that quick recovery? Opportunity here. Sepical wins another challenge though. Reynolds is nice. Does he beat Justin? No. Justin gets there first. His clock's expired. Garrett G is going to stay up on this one. But Sepical, big challenge. Reynolds already in the corner. The pass Whoa. to Arsenal. What is Squishy doing? He keeps it alive. Justin extends it out to midfield and Reynolds will catch it. That's past one player. No. Garrett G will block and gets a bump on a second. Oh, he's Sepical's done. He's there to Reynolds. No. Oh. Oh, squishy <laughs> saves it. for the lead. Turn her over the top of Garrett G. Squishy's there now as Garrett looks for demolitions on the goal line. Doesn't find any, but it paves oh, away for Squishy it. to get it through. No! Ooh. First killer gets the first block and the second, and they deny on the goal line. Turn Turo up against Garrett G. They can't get it through. The rogue defense standing strong. Pops out. Turbo, a weak hit over. Atomic will help out, but Gyro, a nice touch. Illusion also Thinking about going for it. Everyone's oh, up for the peeps. And oh AJ's my. the one who knocks it in. Everybody pay attention right now to Gyro. He goes up for this shot, doesn't have the boost, leaves it then for AJ. You've seen the best, now it's time for all the rest. It's time for Breakout. First up, Seyeg posts a tactic that went horribly right. This is exactly all of my opponents. They look terrible, but somehow they keep getting goals. All the things he did were things I would advise against. Maybe the demo, but he missed it. Then the flip out, 
was awful, and he still gets a goal. I swear. I can't catch a break at all. Let's move on. And honestly, despite all my Snow Day hate, my producer keeps insisting that we put in Snow Day stuff. The next one, though, is from Revalo Nero, who uh, honestly shows a pretty sick shot. Now, I want to let you know that the lines from my producer here say that I'm supposed to say maybe there is something more to Snow Day. I disagree. Cool shot, but I disagree. Moving on, though, Eddie RL shows how you're supposed to actually demo the other team. My comment was going to be, looks like a homing missile, until I realized that's exactly what he called it. That's good demo -age. I'm very proud of you, son. Our next one, though, comes from Natrix22, and you know we gotta have a Rule 1 post in this. Real talk though, guys, go talk to your doctors because I'm pretty sure this is how you get pregnant. Like, like, really. Anyways, let's move to Migley who goes full cinematic mode on this Matrix-like shot. No kung fu. Is that is that good enough? Academy Award coming my way, maybe. Okay. Well, up next, we're gonna look at the rise of space station gaming in Double Tap. While some of you may know Space Station Gaming as the reigning world champions of the Rainbow Six Siege scene, the US-based org has also been making waves in the Rocket League scene as of late. Let's take a look back at their ascension from minor league dreamers to top level contenders and the heroic players who made it happen. Space Station Gaming entered the Rocket League scene in 2018, a few months prior to the start of the RLCS's fifth season. They started off not as the big name squad they're known as today, but rather as one of the nearly 50 teams hoping to win a spot in the RLCS via the minor league rivals series. Having acquired a trio of capable pros, First Over Zero, Espeon, and Lemon Puppy, who were then rotated out for the former Radiance roster of Vince, Memory, and Halcyon, the newly minted SSG set out to make a name for themselves on the proving grounds. By season seven, Space Station Gaming, now consisting of Sathu, Sipical, and AXB, had graduated from rivals to compete in the North American regional stage of the RLCS. While they ended up coming fifth overall and thus narrowly missing a shot at competing in Worlds, their brush with greatness filled the team with determination and resolve. Jay Wismont couldn't find it as Sathu you just changed it up just enough. 17 seconds left, Karma's got to shoot true. The defense comes through again, Jay Wismont back into the corner, but it's shut down by AXB with 10 seconds remaining. Heart Space break. Station, they've got the ball control, they've got everything they need to finish this one off. And Splice, it looked like they could do it. They were so close in every game, but Space Station finally take it away in five. That might be the toughest loss for Splice all season long. The next time the chance rolled around, SSG, now with Arsenal in place of Sathu, clinched it, making it all the way to the Season 8 World Championship playoffs and ending up with a respectable third place finish. Typical does not want to send himself in. He was the third man. It was a safe choice, but could he have created something? Infield now against AXP does it! Space Station versus NRG will be your semi-final! A hammer into the top corner, Casio jumps, but he has to just watch as AXP blasted it past, and Space Station manhandle Veloce 4-1. They've done it. A team that was not even expected to make playoffs. The squad continued to up their game, and come Season 9, they were more confident than ever. Space Station Gaming steamrolled through the North American Regional Finals, dropping only a single match to G2 in the playoff finals and qualifying for the ill-fated World Championship Series in the second place seed. It has propelled them to greatness in this series. They are styling on Space Station. All of them playing 
exceptionally well when it matters most. The season coming to an end and G2 and Rizzo clearing the path. As we do wind our last few seconds down, it's the ultimate redemption story for G2 Esports. They were in the promotion tournament. They've now won the playoffs. Your regional champions, G2 Esports. While that land obviously never happened, SSG were determined to not simply rest on their laurels during the long gap between Seasons 9 and X. When the fall split arrived, the team hit the ground running, with the addition of Ruddles to the team helping them dominate, winning both the first North American Fall Regional and ultimately the Fall Major as well. Ball bouncing down in front, Garrett has been in a forced supersonic retreat all match long, and it isn't getting any slower, Garrett. Another challenge. This is it. Well, NRG's last chance. He goes for a quick one to Squishy. Back over to Garrett. Justin already jumped in the air and he missed the ball. He missed it. Time is expiring. There's no goals for NRG on the board. Space Station have done it. They are your North American Fall Major Champions. Space Station Gaming. They have had such an incredible split. They started off on fire and they finished as the champions for North America. To cap off their best year yet, the indomitable trio took first place in the second annual Rocket League Summit NA. Poetically, their final match was even against Rogue, the very team who had denied them a shot at Worlds during their first ever RLCS season. Rettles forces the option skyward for first well, kill. Taroko popping this up, but it's gotta be Taranturo's ball. He's nowhere close to it. More time shoot off the clock for Space Station at the end of game seven. Falling around in front of the box. First killer oh, can't yeah. find the ball. Soroko backs him up, but midfield is closed for business. Space Station oh, owns keep this every up. single keep length it up. of the pitch. They flip it up again. First it's killer last to... chance. He gets another touch, but he's only got 13. No way. Totoro, no, way. no double. Soroko's oh, there. The play oh, is dead, and Space Station have won. As Season X enters its final stage, SSG still has much to prove. But what they've already proven is that even teams who start from virtually nothing can in time trade blows with the greats, so long as they have the perseverance and skill. Much like we saw Rettles do with the peeps, it's honestly really cool to see new teams come up, punch those big teams in the face, and then stay there as well. Sometimes we'll see them come up and fall back down, but I really like to see when teams can hold their spot amongst the best of the best in any region, in all honesty. Uh, Space Station, obviously, having to prove themselves a bit more, but they've been holding that kind of top four talk spot for quite some time here. But that is all the time we have for today on this show. You can check out more of our content on Twitter, at WatchRLC, and, of course, on our YouTube. Please go check it out. But thank you guys so much for watching and for a little bit of overtime action. Here is your weekly backfire. Bum bum.